Just today, Inception Labs introduced Mercury, which is the first commercial grade diffusion large language model. The traditional large language models that we're used to using are auto regressive. They generate text sequentially. And one of the drawbacks of that method is that the inference cost is both higher as well as the latency is slower as a result. But what's really interesting with these diffusion large language models is what they do is they generate responses in a coarse to fine manner. If we take a close look at the iterations on the right hand side here, what you'll see is when it first starts on the first iteration, it will have a very noisy response. Another way that you can think about this is actually how diffusion models work or image generation or video models work. And how they work is they start out with a very noisy representation of the image or the video. As you can see within this example here, you pretty much can't even tell on the first frame what that image is, but with each iteration, it slowly gets sharper. And after enough generations, you get these very good representations of whether it's photos or videos. What's interesting with Inception Labs is they're the first commercial grade diffusion large language model. So now just to put this into perspective, this model is right around the strength of GPT-40 Mini as well as Claude 3.5 Haiku, although it runs 10 times faster. And part of that is just this overall different architecture of how these models work. For GPT-40 Mini, as shown on the chart here, it looks to be maybe in the 60 to 70 tokens per second range. Whereas the Mercury Coder small model is about 750 and Mercury Coder Mini is over a thousand tokens per second. What's interesting with this type of model is you can run it on NVIDIA H100s at these incredibly fast speeds. You don't need specialized chips for inferencing this model. You can use the pre-existing NVIDIA hardware that already exists out there. When Another interesting thing with this model is even in terms of its performance, when it was tested amongst developers in the co-pilot arena, developers preferred Mercury's generation. It ranked number one on speed as well as number two on quality. They described that Mercury is the fastest code LLM on the market. Just to show you another visual on what this looks like, here is Claude ChatGPT as well as Mercury on the right hand side there. And within six seconds, Mercury was able to generate the response. Whereas for the same question, it took ChatGPT 36 seconds and Claude 28 seconds respectively. Now, if you want to try this out, you can go to chat.inceptionlabs.ai. And what's really cool with this is you also have the animation representing the text diffusion process that you can enable. If we turn that on and let's just try one of these preset examples here. So create a JavaScript animation. I'll go and send this in and we'll see that in just a number of seconds, we have that generation. But what's really cool with this is if you caught it, is seeing that visual representation, what it's doing. Let's generate a few more because I really find the diffusion effect just quite mesmerizing to look at. So we can see it comes in very quickly. What's happening is it's giving a very coarse output and over the iterations, it's refining the output for us. Let's take a look at the blog post here. We trained a diffusion large language model that are up to 10 times faster and cheaper than current LLMs, pushing the frontier of intelligence and speed for large language models. They offer enterprise clients access to code and generalist models via an API and on-premises deployments. Current large language models are auto-regressive, meaning that they generate text left to right, one token at a time. Generation is inherently sequential. A token cannot be generated until all the text comes before it has been generated. And generating each token requires evaluating a neural network with billions of parameters. Frontier LLM companies are betting on test time compute to increase reasoning and error correction capabilities, but generating long reasoning traces come at the price of ballooning inference costs and unusable latency. A paradigm shift is needed to make high quality AI solutions truly accessible. And as they describe, they say diffusion models provide a paradigm shift. These models operate with a coarse defined generation process where the output is refined from pure noise over a few denoising steps as illustrated in the video above. When here's a pretty compelling case that they make for diffusion models is they say, because diffusion models are not restricted to only considering previous output, they are better at reasoning at structuring their responses. And because diffusion models can continually refine their output, they can correct mistakes and hallucinations. For these reasons, diffusion powers all the most prominent AI solutions for video image and audio generation, 
including Sora, Midjourney, and Refusion. However, applications to diffusion to discrete data such as text and code have never been successful until now. They mentioned that this Mercury Coder model, it supports all use cases. So you can use it for reg use cases, tool use, agentic workflows. The other th interesting thing that they mentioned here is improvements are suggested by a neural network, in our case, a transformer model, which is trained on a large amount of data to globally improve the quality of answers by modifying multiple tokens in parallel. As you might imagine, as the name implies, this diffusion large language model is specifically optimized for code generation. In terms of the benchmarks, what's really compelling are the results of these models. So if we look at the human eval of these models, we have 88 as well as 90 on human eval. And in terms of the first release for a diffusion large language model, these are incredibly strong results. We can see how it compares to Gemini 2.0 Flashlight, Claude 3.5 Haiku, GPT-4 O-Mini, as well as Quen and DeepSeek. Mind you, these models aren't comparing themselves to the frontier, but as a first iteration, it is really interesting to see where this is gonna go because if these models are already at par with some of these lighter versions of models from these frontier labs, it's gonna be extremely interesting to watch over the coming months and years to see future releases of these diffusion large language models and how they stack up to some of these releases from the Frontier Labs. They mentioned that even speed optimized autoregressive models only run at most 200 tokens per second, whereas Mercury Coder on a commodity NVIDIA H100 can run over a thousand tokens per second, a 5x increase. When compared to the Frontier models, those models are generally slower, which run less than 50 tokens per second, and this is a 20x speed up. Now, the interesting thing that they call it here is that previously, the only way that you could get these types of speed was through specialized hardware, such as Grok, Cerebrus, as well as Samba Nova. They mentioned that our algorithmic improvements are orthogonal to hardware acceleration and speedups would compound on faster chips. With that being said, it would be really interesting to see how this model performs on the latest Blackwell chips from NVIDIA and what types of speed we'll be able to see from Inception. Now here's just another visual in terms of the speeds and we can see how it stacks up across all of the different models. What's really interesting with this is when we compare these results to the smallest models that are available from both Anthropic as well as OpenAI. And we can see that those are both sitting around about 60 tokens per second. Now Gemini 2.0 Flash Lite just came out around 200 tokens per second. One thing that I do want to mention with speed is as they begin to roll this out to enterprise or developers, it will be interesting to see if they can maintain these speeds in production because that's the thing with Claude 3.5 Haiku as well as especially GPT-4 O-Mini. These are production endpoints which do get a lot of traffic. So being able to actually facilitate and triage all of that demand because as you roll this out to developers and have to balance the different hardware that you have. But overall, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know your thoughts on this type of model. Would you be interested in using this type of thing within your application? Let me know your thoughts within the comments below. Otherwise, if you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.